You don't get long to celebrate victory in Syria because the response of the Assad regime and its allies to those who defy them is to unleash even more suffering and nightmarish scenes like this. This is the rebel-held stronghold of Idlib, an ambulance heading towards countless fires and an eerie white light, all caused, they claim, by illegal phosphorus-like bombs dropped from the air by government and Russian planes. The ambulance driver, Mohamed Shakil, a volunteer from Birmingham, has come to recognize the internationally banned weapons that are deployed here. More cluster bombs have been dropped just right now as we speak. More cluster bombs just now, subhanAllah, just dropped. Soon, over the internet, local coordinators were telling us of more civilian casualties. A woman with her two children were injured by the phosphoric attack in, that happened last night in Idlib. I was informed that, the two, that this woman and the two children were taken to hospital. They are under treat, under treat now. I was informed as well that deep, deep burns happened in their skins. What a contrast with these scenes over the weekend when rebel fighters from Idlib danced in the street celebrating the part they'd played in breaking the month-long siege of neighboring Aleppo. The triumph was brief. Even as Abdul Khalif al Hamdo, who's been keeping a video diary for ITV News, was looking forward to reopening a route for food and medicine, Assad's forces struck back. The siege has been broken by a revolt, and now the civilians who are inside Aleppo, who were besieged, now have a road in and out of Aleppo. That now the regime is trying to take revenge. That revenge included the bombs that exploded in Abdul Khalif's neighborhood, killing one of his university colleagues this morning. The Assad regime is not taking this military setback lightly. It has released cockpit images of some of its strikes against rebel positions, but the repeated targeting of civilians and the banned munitions it's accused of using has once again led to accusations of war crimes and calls for UN intervention. Paul Davis, News at 10.